How do engineers know new engines will work nominally once they reach space? Obviously you test fire a new engines as many times as you see fit on Earth, but how do you know the effect the vacuum of space or really the lack of gravity air will have on a new engine? Is it just math and the engines that came before at that point? Would there ever be a benefit to somehow test firing in space? There are a number of vacuum test facilities available for testing engines in space and near space conditions. The NASA White Sands Test Facility has several test stands for space and near space testing, but they don't have really memorable names. Enter image description here. Test Stand 302 is an insulated 32 feet diameter by 38 feet high 10 meters diameter by 11. 6 meters high carbon steel altitude chamber with three interior levels for test article access with a dual position, vertical or horizontal firing capability, and an altitude capability of up to 100 kft kilometers for engine firings using the steam ejector system and up to 250 kft kilometers non-firing capability with vacuum pumps. Test Stand 303 is an insulated 11 feet diameter by 39 feet long 3.35 meters diameter by 11.9 meters long horizontal carbon steel altitude chamber capable of holding propulsion systems up to approximately 7 feet 2.13 meters in diameter and 25 feet 7.6 meters in length. It is capable of testing single engines or test articles with multiple engines up to 1000 lbf 4.5 kilonewtons total thrust. It has a single position, horizontal firing capability and an altitude capability of up to 100 kft 30.4 kilometers for engines firing using the steam ejector system and up to 250 kft 76 kilometers non-firing capability with vacuum pumps. Enter image description here. Test Stand 401 is a 32 feet diameter by 33 feet high 9.75 meters diameter by 10 meters high carbon steel altitude chamber capable of accommodating a vehicle with a thrust vector controlled 25 klbf 110 kn thrust engine firing vertically downward. The stand is capable of testing maximum test articles of 15 feet by 15 feet by 45 feet 4.6 meters by 4.6 meters by 13.7 meters. It has three interior levels that can be reconfigured to meet test requirements. It has a dual position, vertical and horizontal firing capability and an altitude capability up to 100 k 30.5 kilometers for engine firings using the steam ejector system and up to 250 k 76 kilometers non-firing capability with vacuum pumps. There are several more. The altitude of white sands about 5 k feet means that even the ambient stands are working at a somewhat reduced pressure. NASA AFRL has multiple smaller cells, one of which can go to higher altitudes. The Space Environment Simulation Facility 1-42C can perform static tests simulating space altitudes of up to 650 kft. The chamber is a 30 feet, diameter sphere capable of achieving 1 by 10 to 6 tor at temperatures of 300 F or plus 400 F. Blue Origin is apparently upgrading and using that facility now. Apparently, the Glenn Center even had a facility for vacuum testing of nuclear rockets.